Brethren, praise the God. We are still in our episodes, Finding God. And now let us talk about a woman called Mary. We have several Marys in the Bible. We have Mary, a sister to Lazarus and a sister to Martha. We have other Marys that I mentioned, the wife of Cleopas and others. We have Mary Magdalena. But the Mary that we talk about now is the Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, the Virgin Mary, the woman that we read about in the Bible. I've said it before, I say it again. We dive into the Word of God to find lessons, to find how these people, to find out how these people lived their life and in which way they did so that we also align ourselves to the will of God. Mary is a woman that was lowly and the Bible talks about her very asily and we're going to base ourselves on a scripture. The scripture that is in Luke chapter 1 verse 26 down to verse 38. But I just want to run through very quickly that the angel was sent by God to a lady in the six months, God sent an angel, Gabriel, the angel is mentioned, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And so here the Bible gives us where the girl lived, her lineage, and the intention to marry getting married to a man called Joseph, and Joseph who was in the lineage of King David, and they mentioned the name of the girl, the young lady. The angel went to her, and the angel that was sent is called Gabriel. Gabriel, the messenger of good news. And he came to her and said, Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Very, very telling statement. Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel Gabriel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. And you know someone who keeps repeating your name, mentioning the name and favorably, there is something that it brings to your heart. Mary must have been one, must have wondered what kind of visit this is. But the angel said, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will be with the child and give birth to a son and you have to give him the name Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? This is the message that comes to this young lady. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high God. The reason why the angel is the one that actually is proclaiming to her. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. And this same is the one that we proclaim as our Lord and Savior. Now, Mary asked the question. Remember, she was still a virgin and just betrothed. She was just engaged to be married to a man called Joseph. So she asked, verse 34, how will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. Now the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, remember? Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren in her six months now. Remember the message is coming to Mary, but Elizabeth was now six months pregnant. Now verse 37, for nothing is impossible with God. Now friends, even if we don't speak much, but this is very telling, that we gather from the visit that was, you know, the visit by Gabriel the angel to Mary, it is because of that visit that this statement comes out very clearly for nothing is impossible with God. 
And in verse 38, the response of the young lady amazes me. She just proclaims, I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May it be to me as you have said. Praise the Lord. And this is the message that we gather from the word of God about the young lady called Mary. And Mary, a virgin. And here, the angel of the Lord comes from God. The message that comes is direct from God himself to this designated person. And of course, all of us that live in this life, we are always yearning for a divine visitation, whatever sorts, whatever time, whatever moments, but a visit that comes from God. Of course, actually, God has made a divine visitations to his several people. To Abraham, there was a divine visitation, and something wonderful happened in his house. To Jacob, divine visitation. Remember when he was moving? going to a place where he was going and where he was sleeping, the Bible does mention that actually he saw a ladder stretched from earth, from heaven to earth, and he saw angels moving up and down. And you just imagine angels coming up and down over your head, bringing blessings, bringing good tidings, the message that comes from the Lord. And all of us yearn for that kind of encounter. Mary was real live. She saw the angel. Jacob was asleep and he dreamt and he saw that happening and God fulfilled what he had said. Manoah saw the angel. I mentioned Manoah because Manoah was the father of Samson and in the barrenness, something peculiar happened. Elizabeth, whom we talked about. Now, the message that comes is there is nothing that is impossible with God. All things are possible. And this is evidenced in the entire scripture. Now Mary, the virgin, without man, and her without knowing, she had kept herself. For whatever reasons, she had remained a person focused. And it is in that focus that the Lord visited her. So the message that comes to you and comes to me is be prepared to be used of God at all times. As we live our life, let us be ready, let us be focused on the will of God. And this young lady, without knowing, without intention, she must have, you know, sensed something divine. And here the angel comes with a message. So keep yourself in anticipation. Keep yourself in anticipation. Mary did, and she, she received her portion. And even when Mary was a person of low, low social status, like others had been, of course, the Bible is full of examples. You could be, I am, a person of low status, but God, it is the way God uplifts his people. And my prayer is God uplifts you, God uplifts me, and we only need to align ourselves to the will of God. And this is actually critical, this is important, lowly as we may be. You know, humble as we may be, but there's a way God lifts his people. And so in the story of Mary, we discover God uplifting her. And the proclamation of Elizabeth is no mean statement. Blessed are you among all women. Remember when she visited Mary, when she visited Elizabeth, when Mary visited Elizabeth, the proclamation was blessed are you among all the women. God lifts up. God blesses people. Now, one other thing that actually we pick from Mary is that actually she exhibited faith in God. And so we too need to exhibit faith. We need to put our faith in God. And so the statement is, put your faith in God. Now, I tell my soul, put your faith in God. And Mary was uplifted because she put her faith in God. And so the contrast that comes here between the two families Zechariah, when he received the message, because it was the message was to the man, and because of their old age, Zechariah doubted. And he did not believe that in their old age they could get a baby, and there were repercussions, there were effects, there were, you know, something happened. And God desires that actually when a message comes 
we receive it like Abraham did, like all the men of the old men and women of the old times did. Mary was troubled, but she didn't doubt. And so the cry doubted, and it had effect, it had a repercussion. Mary wondered, but she believed. And so we too are called upon to be a people of faith, exhibiting our faith, putting our faith in God. Mary proclaimed in verse 38 a popular song that actually is sung by many women, Chive um, Kunze Ngabuogambie in Uganda, and says, May it be to me as you have proclaimed. Lord is made, Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And we receive God's blessing very easily. And how I pray that I can also say, May it be to me as the angel of the Lord has proclaimed. Now, Mary indeed. One other thing is, Mary was the servant of the Lord, and it is evidenced here in verse 38. And so live your life as the servant of the Lord. Mary lives as an example. Live your life as a servant of the Lord. Lady, live your life as a servant of the Lord. Young man, young man, young woman, or man, whoever you are, live yourself as, live your life as a servant of the Lord. Mary proclaimed, I am the Lord's servant. And from this, I also pick and say, I am the Lord's servant. I can also proclaim the same, that you are the Lord's servant. So be willing to be used of God. Mary was for God to bring about his purposes, to fulfill his purposes. Now, Paul, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, offering ourselves as a living sacrifice. Now, also pray that God will enable us to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, and that's so that God will fulfill his purposes in our lives, in our ministry, at our workplaces, wherever we are, and as parents, as children, offer yourself as a living sacrifice, and so that God can use you to fulfill his purposes. And this is actually important. This is critical. This, in our time, we need it. Of course, the, the deviation is so much. People, I mean, we paint ourselves a picture of knowing God, yet we deny him, as Paul puts it, in our actions. So may God enable you, God, may God enable me to be a person ready and willing to be used of God in our ministry, and ministries are various. God can be calling you to various ministries. Now you need to position yourself. You need to align yourself to the will of God who is our Father in heaven, and you'll do what you need. Now, in the final statements that I'm making, Mary amazes me that when you read on in chapter 2, verse 19, there's something that, that is mentioned there, and the Bible says that Mary keeps kept pondering things in her, in her heart, you know, treasuring things. Every story that she would hear, she would keep it in her heart. You know, when Jesus was born, the shepherds came. Of course, okay, the news all over the world, the news all over the place, that the Savior had been born. The shepherds came and singing, of course, actually, you know, wondering what it would be. And even the angels proclaiming and praising. Now, in verse 19 of chapter 2, the Bible says, and, But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. No, it is, this portion calls us for nothing but to live quiet lives in your heart, to ponder, to think, to meditate upon the happenings of the Lord. Now, you and I are called upon, because okay, the world is so noisy, the world is so many, many things, busy things, that noise all over the place. Noise from the social media, noise from televisions, noise from human beings that they keep moving around. Noise, 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 noise. But you need to close up yourself a little bit sometimes and think through the happenings in your life. Mary did that very, very much. She treasured these things in her heart and she kept thinking about them. Now, what is God saying to you? What is God telling you? Take your time, think through them. And this is when, when they come true, you are able to burst into praise. Because when you boogu boogu, I mean running and noisy and, you know, it's okay to, to live that life as well, but taking your life in quiet also. 
there's time for everything when it is singing and dancing and praising and you know thanking God in, in the loud noise but also there's time to also to quieten down and ponder on the things that the Lord has done and when it happens Mary burst into a song a song called Magnificat and she sang it with the praise and when Jesus um, was born it was all jubilation all over and remember Zechariah burst into a song she sang, he sang a song when, you know, when his speech returned. Remember, there was a punishment that he received because he doubted. But when the baby was born, John, the Baptist, you know, he burst into a song. And all of us are called upon to burst into a song, singing and praising God for his goodness that he has, you know, showed it to us. And Mary also burst into a song called Magnificat. And she sang it and all the people were amazed in chapter 1, verse uh, 46, and Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in my God, my Savior, my Savior, for he has been mindful of me, his made servant. Now God remains mindful. And so, pondering, thinking about these things, you quieten yourself, align yourself, and when they happen, you burst into a story, you burst into a song, and Mary shows us she was a worship woman. She was a worshipful person, praise and things like that. So Mary magnifies, magnified the Lord. So may you too be a person that magnifies the Lord. And so from Mary's life, she becomes the bearer of the Savior. She was blessed with a gift that came to the world and that the reason why you and I are able to speak about these things because Mary accepted, availed herself. And someone has said that actually the key to usability is availability. And many times we have done things that derail us and take us away that we are not available. But here Mary was available and therefore she was usable of God. So I pray for you and I pray for myself that for me to be used of God, I need to be available and listen to his word, listen to his promises. And when he visits, he finds you there. Because actually Mary was available when the angel came, found him, found her there, spoke to her there, she actually believed there, and said, may it be done to me, as you have said, now availability is what I live with you, is what I ask you. And may God who has done this in the past, may he do it to you. My son, may he do it to you. My daughter, may he do it to you. Whoever you are, my brother, my sister, and may he, may he do it to me. And be available and be in the arena of the Lord. Because he desires, sometimes he comes, he comes with a message, he doesn't find you. But when you are available, he will speak it. And when what is meant for you will be for you. And may God who has taught us through Mary continue his journey of salvation in your life. And may he continue his journey of salvation in my life. And so that actually the time will come when we shall burst into a song at that thing that you are praying for, and that thing that you are believing God for. And may, he, may it come true because God is the promise maker and God is the promise fulfiller. He will fulfill them and he will fulfill it for me. He will fulfill it for you. And we'll bless a song and praise the Lord and worship him and sing praises to him. And may he be with you and be with us all during this generation as we find God because he has done it before. May he bless you and bless all of us in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <music>